Hi boys and girls, this is Miss Coker. Before we start today's lesson, I have a riddle for you. When is one fourth bigger than one half? Pause the video and think about this for a moment. When could one fourth be bigger than one half? Well, let's take a look at a couple examples. Here, Jackson is eating a giant donut, and here we have a teeny tiny donut. Is one fourth of Jackson's huge donut bigger than one half of this teeny tiny donut? Well, yes it is. The reason I'm showing you this riddle today is because when you are comparing two fractions, you have to make sure they're referring to the same whole or the same size whole. You can't make two comparisons from two different things that are not the same size. For example, if I said to you, would you like one fourth of a pizza or one half of a pizza, you first need to understand that both the fourth and the half belong to that same pizza or the same size pizza. I'm not comparing a giant pizza to a baby pizza. For today's lesson, we are going to use the fraction strips that we created yesterday. If you need to, pause the video and press play when you have them ready. Today we have a couple would you rather questions. You can either answer these alone or you can answer them with a family member. Here's the first one. Would you rather drink one eighth cup of hot sauce or drink one half cup of hot sauce? At this point, pause the video, use your fraction strips to help you decide. Before I use fraction strips, I like to think about what I know about these two fractions, one eighth and one half. Well, I automatically know that one eighth is a lot smaller than one half because it takes eight pieces to build that whole cup of hot sauce. Those eight pieces would be really tiny. Versus one half, it only takes two pieces to build that whole cup of hot sauce. So those halves or those two pieces would be bigger. Here we notice that one eighth definitely is smaller than one half. Hmm, personally, I think I'd drink that one eighth cup of hot sauce. Let's take a look at another would you rather. Would you rather eat three fourths of a rotten egg or eat three sixths of a rotten egg? Again, use your fraction strips to solve this problem. Before I use my fraction strips, I like to use reasoning to make sense of these two fractions. Well, both of them have three parts, so I'm trying to figure out the size of each of those parts. Hmm, I think fourths might be bigger than sixths. So three fourths, I think, is bigger than three sixths. Let's take a look. I'm using my fraction strips here, and I can see that yes, three fourths is bigger than three sixths. Again, the fourths are bigger because it only takes four pieces to make that whole egg, versus the sixths, it takes six pieces to build that whole egg. So those sixth size pieces would be smaller. All right, let's do one last would you rather. Would you rather run a race that is one? and three eighths miles long, or run a race that is one and two fourths miles long. Now, both of these are longer than one whole fraction strip. So you might need to use multiple strips to represent these. Pause the video to represent and make your decision, and then press play when you're ready. I try to reason with my fractions before building them with fraction strips. Now, I know that each race is more than one mile long. So I'm just going to look at that part that's three eighths long versus two fourths long. Hmm. Well, I know that four eighths is half of a mile. So three eighths will be less than half of a mile. And I know that two fourths is equal to one half a mile. So I think the longer race would be one and two fourths. I'm going to choose the shorter race, one and three eighths. Let me confirm this with my fraction strips because as a mathematician, it's always good to visualize my work. 
So at the top, I built my one whole mile and then my three eighths of a mile. And then at the bottom, I built my one whole mile and two fourths of a mile. And I was right, one and three eighths of a mile is shorter. I'm going to run that race. Hey, Reagan, I have a question for you. How old are you? Um, one, two, four. Four? Now you're four what? Do you know what that four means? I'm old. You are old. And that four means that you're actually four years old. So you're, you've, been, you've been alive for one year, two years, three years, four years. Except, did you know you're older than that? Do you know what comes after four? What number is that? Five like Jackson. So you're not quite, so you're more than four, but you're not quite five yet. So right now you are one, two, three, four and a half. Hey Reagan, how are you doing today? Good. Do you know how old you are? Um, four and a half. Good job. Boys and girls, just like Reagan, most of you haven't been alive for an exact number of years. For example, I am 40 and a couple months. So I could represent my age as 40 and one third years old. Reagan has been alive for four whole years and one half of a year. So she is four and a half years old. Today's challenge is for you to use your fraction strips to represent your age. Now, if you are more than just a few years old, you might have to cut some extra strips. I would love to see your representation of your age using your fraction strips. You can send me a picture on Facebook, or you can have your grown-up send a picture to me. Have a good day, boys and girls.